Hello students. So today we are going to learn the second part of the chapter the living world adaptation and classification. Again if you see the animation page the earth the living world but from the first part is slightly unusual. Why it is unusual if you see you can see movement in the earth right now what is the movement can see water moving or changes in the surface area right now this can happen because uh, if the forest is destroyed if the environment is destroyed the biodiversity changes water starts drying up so it can affect the entire world okay now in this part of the chapter we are going to learn adaptation animals in the previous part we have learned about plants again in this adaptation in aquatic animals adaptation in forest and grassland animals adaptation in desert animals adaptation in animals of snowy regions adaptation in aerial animals adaptation in reptiles adaptation for food in animals adaptation for blending with the surrounding Darwin's theory of evolution, classification of living organisms, binomial nomenclature by Carlos Linnaeus. So, we are going to learn this part in today's part of the video along with few scientists as well. And you can see a few animation that is just to think and ponder what are things are there in the surrounding earth. We would always observe and learn new things. Now coming to the next slide, the first part adaptation in animals. So adaptation in aquatic animals that is animals found in water. Now when you say aquatic animals, it not only includes fish but frog, reptiles or even mammals right like dolphin. Dolphin is a mammal. So all these animals are included in aquatic. Now coming to the first point, as compared to the terrestrial animals, the skin and body shape of aquatic animals appear to have undergone changes, right? Because land animals, the changes according to the surrounding is compared to lesser than in case of uh, species in water like for example they need respiration the body is always wet right so all these changes has to be adapted now second point fishes have scales on the skin and fins on the body scales which covers their body fins which helps to swim in water their body tapers towards both its ends like spindle. Now what is tapering means thick in the middle region slightly pointed towards the end regions. So it can easily move through water. Fish breathe with gills instead of nose. So in case of land animals respiration breathing takes place with the help of nose. But in case of uh, fishes it is by gills. So their eyes have transparent eyelids. They have air bladders within the body to help them to float. So again these uh, transparent eyelids help them to keep uh, moving in water uh, whereas air, air bladders uh, which help them uh, these animals when they are above the surface of water. As the frog and duck have webbed toes, they can use their legs like oars. Now, frog and duck, we might have observed. So, here also you can see animation image, which uh, throughout the adaptation you will find more, like you saw in the first video. So, a lot of animation, whatever examples you are learning. So, you can see a frog swimming, right? They have got uh, the oars like webbed toes which helps them in swimming and even in case of duck what is oars if you have seen the boatman when he moves the boat with the help of the oars which is made up of wood right then water flows of the waxy feathers of birds like duck and water hen if you see the duck is not getting wet right reason they got waxy feathers so that water does not absorb onto their body it flows off into the water bodies then 
Webbed toes, slippery smooth skin and a triangular head helps frog to swim easily through water. So you can see here the frog easily swimming through the water. The head is triangular shape, the skin is smooth and slippery and webbed toes which help in swimming. They can live on land as well as water due to the ability to breathe through the skin in water and using the nose and lungs on the land. So as we know the frog or even toads or even there is another species called a salamander. So these species are called as what? Amphibians. Amphibians means the animals which can live in land as well as water because when they are in land they can breathe uh, through the lungs which is present on the surface of water through the skin and inside the water when they are young as you call as tadpole they have got gills for respiration okay then the typical color of frog's back helps it to hide among grasses again in the previous video we learned this again we will be learning here also what it is called as camouflage so frogs can camouflage with their color to the background okay then you can see here three images one the fish swimming in water again the fish very beautiful uh, which is called as beta fish okay just an example of fish then frog and duck now again you can see some more images of what we read uh, in the previous slide here fish now there are many labelings but what is the important part which you have to learn the eyelid which uh, uh, is transparent which helps to swim in water mouth then the different fins are the pectoral and pelvic fins which helps in swimming the nostrils are present operculum or the gill cover below is the gills are present for respiration then scales are present on the body so these are some of the important labelings which you have to learn then you can see over here from top to the bottom all colorful frogs are if you identify properly now this when you go through the video you can identify where is the frog actually okay one you can see here very clearly so there are one two three four five images so one very clear but try to identify and find out in other images where is the frog okay then you can see here a bird it is actually a, a, a pea fowl which uh, or we can say water hen uh, which is uh, again swims in water the body is not wettable all the uh, water birds whether it is uh, duck or uh, water hen so their body has got waxy fe uh, feathers which does not absorb the water okay Coming to the next adaptation, that is adaptation in forest and grassland animals. So here, carnivorous animals like the wild dog, fox, tiger and lion have strong legs to run fast and capture their prey. Why? Because they are predators, so they catch their prey. Prey can be a rabbit or it can be a deer or different antelopes, right? It generally, we call antelopes for deer or black bugs or other um, species uh, of the deer family okay uh, wild dog wild dog uh, it's uh, slightly differing from the normal dog which again you can see the animation in the next slide okay so because these uh, predators they have got strong legs so they can run fast and catch the prey now why they catch the prey for food right they have claws and their canine teeth are sharp and pointed. So, which once they hold on or catch the prey, the prey cannot escape. And their canine teeth are so sharp and pointed, they can tear the flesh of the prey. Tiger have padded paws. This enables them to silently stalk their prey and capture it easily. Now again in the previous video we have seen the tiger, lion, leopard, they hide in the uh, grassland region or tall grasses and slowly move to catch the prey. So they come as close to them and then they pounce on them so that the prey does not escape. The eyes of the predatory carnivores are located in front of their head. So the eyes in case of carnivorous species, lion, tiger, it is in front. It helps them to spot their 
prey from a long distance so from a longer distance also they can identify the prey where it is present or even it at a larger distance the eyes of the herbivores are below the forehead on the either side of the head this gives them wide angle vision which helps to protect their protect them from predators their legs are long and tapering with strong hoofs which enable them to run faster taking long leaps so in case of the herbivore specifically as we talk about the antelopes deer black bucks etc so they have a wide angle vision so they can see on either side while eating the grasses and their eyes are present below the forehead as they are usually tall a uh, height head so they can uh, see again with a wide angle to see the predators the lion and tigers and strong hooves which helps them to run faster and with the long legs they can take a long leap as well their long and freely movable ears so the ears are also long and movable can receive sounds from a long distance and different directions Deer and black bucks have colors that merge with their surrounding. Their teeth are strong for chewing through plant material. When you say plant material, it is a grass, leaves, different type of plant species, right? So they are very strong, so they can chew them properly. And uh, their colors are such that they merge with their ba background. So they also uh, do a little bit of camouflaging with the surrounding, so as to escape from the predators. now you can see all the beautiful images the lion and the tiger together that also white tiger with the king lion then you can see a black buck sitting and relaxing then below you can see the deers or you can say as i told antelopes black buck jumping and running so you see how they are running with the hoofs they are taking a long jump as well as a long leap with their long legs then fox then here wild dogs now wild dogs if you see it's not usual like the normal dog if i specify this is african wild dog so you can see the coloration shape see the ears it's slightly circular so different from the normal dog so all the examples which are there i put the images animation so you can understand what the animals looks like okay Moving to the next adaptation, there is adaptation in desert animals. Deserts are characterized by severe scarcity of water. So when we use the term desert, that that itself comes to our mind that water scarcity will be there or the temperature is very hot, right? Hence, desert animals have a thick skin to prevent loss of water from the body. So because of the thick skin, the water is very less evaporated. then their legs are long with flattened cushioned sole that is in case of camel the nostrils are protected by folds of skin so that the in the desert region you might have seen the uh, breeze wind continuously so because of which sand can go into your nostril so because of which the fold of the skin prevent the sand from entering into their nostrils the eyelashes are long and thick what are the examples here rat snake spider lizards in the deserts live in deep burrows during day time and are active at night why so because during the day time it is very hot so because of extreme hot climate they bury themselves under the sand and night time since it is cool they come out you can see the images which i have put animation images the uh, snake burying itself under the sand here the lizard again burying itself under the sand you can see a spider slightly different from the uh, usual spider it is called as a camel spider and you can see a rat over here now this rat also is not usual which we see in our home right why if you observe carefully they got the short fore limb and long hind limb so they are hopping like a kangaroo that's why the name given to them is kangaroo rat so slightly unusual from the normal rat okay and when the tail is long then here you can see the image of the camel uh, where along with it the baby camel is there which is white in color because when they are young the skin color is not there so it is white as they starts to grow their color changes to the usual dark or light brown in color similarly i give one more additional information see this camel you can see two hump 
usually the camel has one hump here there is a two humped camel the name is what bacterian camel which is found in the desert regions during the extreme uh, cold climate these camels have got fur on their body but when the temperature increases summer season then they can shed or remove their fur from the body okay that is the uh, addition information about this particular camel coming to the next adaptation that is adaptation animals of snowy region so animals like yak polar bear white fox silver fox mountain goat siberian husky dog and snow leopard are found in these region see how many species there when we think about snow or cold region we only think about polar bear right but there are many such animals present so all the names which is mentioned here i put all the species so you come to know what is the species looking like okay a white or silvery body color long thick hair on the skin are the typical character so what is the character of these animals found in snow region it is white or silvery color a uh, long thick hair is present so as to protect from the winter or the cold climate if you see here yak the first example given right see the body is uh, entirely covered with thick long hair okay then uh, the polar bear now if you see polar bear on the back the babies are holding on to the mama and they are moving around here and there right so they are enjoying the the cold climate over there then white fox now if you see the fox there are two types given one is white and silver fox white you can see the color difference and the silver fox this slightly is a silver in color or you can see uh, rather grayish in color but what these both fox are doing can you identify both are jumping and getting inside the snow why because they got uh, very good sense organ as well as smell so they can uh, feel the movement of fishes going underneath so that's why when they feel the movement they immediately jump taking a height and a leap and then pounds into the snow part and then catch hold of the fishes so that is one way of catching hold of their prey now a few more images of the uh, animals found in snow region first mountain goat you can see the mountain goat how they are climbing on the mountains the normal goats which are found uh, near our place cannot climb this mountain but these are usually habited to such method of climbing okay then snow leopards snow leopard again if you see the body uh, is covered by thick fur and then here babies of the snow leopard then here we can see siberian husky dog now again if you saw different uh, dog species silver dog uh, white dog or um, the african wild dogs all the dogs slightly there is a difference in their appearance shape etc right so this is the siberian husky dog now further adaptation in aerial animals that is the animals which fly again here when you talk about aerial it is not only birds but it can be insects it can be mammals also which mammal we can see the uh, animation image of the bat bat is a mammal right now coming to the points the spindle shaped body of birds also minimizes the resistance of air while flying so it helps to fly again spindle shape here the thick in the middle region tapering to both the ends with hollow bones why hollow bones so that the larger birds they can fly easily if the bones are thick then it will be very difficult to carry the body so with hollow bones and a body covering of feathers and modification of four limbs into wings their body weight is light in weight and adapted for flying so these are the adaptation for aerial animals to fly the body of insects are also light in weight and tapers at both the end so in case of insects it also has got similar so here you can see an example which i put dragon fly then they can fly with two pair of wings which you can see here two pairs and also walk with six stick like legs that also it is clearly visible now bats can fly with the help of patagium a thin fold of skin between their forelimbs and hindlimbs so if you see bat it 
they don't have exactly wings but actually with their hand and legs there is a four limb and hand limb there is an extension of skin what it is called as patagium so this helps them in flying you can see here bat which is uh, coming towards a plant uh, and having the edible pollen grains from this particular flower of the plant here does a dragonfly and third eagle catching hold of the uh, fish in the ocean and how it is moving quickly and swiftly next adaptation adaptation in reptiles reptiles what is the meaning the term reptile means creeping crawling animals right so here animals like house lizard garden lizard crocodile use their muscles for creeping similarly they show adaptation in skin soles of feet body color so now reptiles again all the examples with some additional information additional images also added over here house lizard is very common which we have seen garden lizard see a garden lizard it is a picture where uh, otherwise uh, you can use a name as calatus you can see the coloration then crocodile which again you might have observed but along with the added another reptile or relative of crocodile we can say alligator see how the alligator is walking around the garden then uh, further point the for example the house lizard and monitor lizards have clawed toes and thin scales whereas snakes have scaly skin now here what is the example the house lizard as you already seen monitor lizard you can see now put the image of a monitor lizard which is very huge now these uh, monitor lizards they are kept as pet in african countries so it is very huge or sometimes it uh, the name other than monitor lizard is komodo dragon as well then snake can see a green uh, 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 viper snake which is slightly moving its tail okay so they have got scaly skin and even they can change their skin at times now a few more additional images some beautiful ones see here you can see a two headed snake both the heads moving in different direction but they can't move why because the body is same only they uh, search for food water they move their head in different direction so they have to uh, fight with their same head uh, and the body movement here and there then you can see the one of the big species of reptile or snake that is anaconda uh, which is usually found in the amazon forest now uh, in amazon forest there are hundreds of species present but again uh, it can be dangerous also but we don't know because the uh, amazon forest so vast nobody has gone deep into the forest otherwise there may be many different species present over there then tortoise here it is a giant galapagos tortoise now uh, the what is the name galapagos the galapagos is a island where there are many different species so this one giant tortoise is a famous one over there this is very huge and as you may be knowing the tortoise is the animal which lives for the most number of years that is almost around 250 years that is the lifespan of the tortoise now i uh, added a image of turtle because always there is a confusion what is a tortoise and a turtle now tortoise is usually a land animal you can see the shell which is larger Curved, whereas foot it is used for walking and turtle over here you can see the shell is slightly smaller in comparison and they don't have foot like legs but the oar like legs which helps them in swimming and here you can see two friends having fun with each other playing uh, around in the water one hanging on the other okay coming to the next adaptation adaptation of food in animals now what uh, type of food they have how what are the different uh, mouth parts or different way they eat right so here we can categorize animals as behavior uh, that is herbivorous and carnivorous based on the behavior or how they consume the food what type of food they have special adaptation are seen in each category to make the process of feeding easy the feeding habits of animals like frogs snakes birds mosquitoes butterflies are different so as all the different animals are there around us all have different habits of taking in the food or behavioral habits of having food so you can see a frog with a long tongue holds the 
that is uh, the dragonfly and the tongue is sticky so the dragonfly sticks onto the tongue and it consumes it then snake feeding on a mouse snake the mouth is uh, very flexible so even though the mouse is larger they can gulp down the mouse very easily even they can gulp down a deer as well so their body mouth is very flexible then in case of mosquito which we know it's a parasite sucking the blood so they have proboscis as you can see I labeled here which uh, peers inside our skin and sucks the blood and in case of butterfly even they got proboscis but they use it only for sucking the nectar from the flower then woodpecker which has got pointed beak so it makes holes on the trees and also it helps to eat the small insects termites then i added one more image of a bird keda wax wing if you see carefully they are eating the small berries from the trees and here just to add a point if you observe birds all the birds are got and different species got different type of beaks for example pigeon it is short thick for eating grains parrot thick and slightly curved for eating uh, fruits nuts etc and uh, in case of woodpecker as you can see for eating insects and here kedar waxwing for eating berries or if you take vulture eagle carnivorous bird they got long uh, pointed and curved for tearing the flesh of the other animals which they catch as prey then coming to the next adaptation adaptation for blending with the surrounding now, what is this meaning camouflaging so we can easily spot colored butterflies lizards and grasshopper correct they are get camouflaged amid grasses parts of the plants like stem leaves flowers etc it, it is because their colors blend with those of the surrounding now as you've seen uh, most commonly the frog or uh, reptiles etc camouflaging and even insects only when the insects move around from the grass we can uh, identify something is moving around right so yeah again I added few interesting images animation you can see a dried leaf but it's not a dried leaf it is actually butterfly see the dried leaf when it opens up you can see the beautiful coloration of the butterfly so hence the name given as dead leaf butterfly so you can see all images which i put are different from the usual one not the common which you see is uncommon or the animation here grasshopper which is very commonly seen but uh, here it is a closer view but unless if you see normally from a longer distance or normally it doesn't uh, easily be recognized and here chameleon now if you observe carefully see the changes in the color uh, how from green slowly changes uh, to different coloration so you can see uh, all three to four different coloration which changes in the chameleon okay then i added one more beautiful image which most of us not come across that is octopus now octopus also can camouflage if you see here the octopus slowly moving and taking the coloration of the rocks which is surrounding over there so how they are disguising themselves either to crack, catch a prey or to escape from any bigger predators so again beautiful image of octopus camouflaging in the surrounding rocks always remember now this is some additional which helps us to learn more about science more about our nature so here adaptation is not a sudden process as we are just learned in the previous two uh, parts first part as well as over here so adaptation takes place very slowly it is a gradual and continuous process gradual slowly and steadily and goes on continuously differences in the structure and appearance of present day animals and the animals of thousands of years ago are the adaptation that occurred according to the prevailing condition so species which you found now or uh, which earlier might be in a different case so as slowly and steadily there may be changes or if i add one more point now now in between every year you may come across discovery of new species how this new species are discovered this because of this changes variation or as we say evolution new species are formed slowly and gradually next uh, it is our duty to conserve this biodiversity. Bio so it is necessary for us to take care of our surrounding plants, animals. Otherwise, after a certain period of time, everything will get 
extinct so if it becomes extinct then it is not possible to get back right changes that takes place in the various organs and life processes of organism that enable them to live feed reproduce to perpetuate themselves and protect themselves from the enemies in specific surrounding depending upon the habitat and its geographical condition are called adaptation now here as it's mentioned geographical condition so i'll just give an example here giraffe now if you go back and learn in the uh, science earlier the giraffe was considered to be very short like a horse or even smaller than that but the place where they were found that is uh, the region or the geographical condition was such that there was no grass in the ground the small trees were not there all tall trees were there so they had to stretch themselves their legs neck to eat the leaves of the tree so in that process over a longer period of time the giraffe the present day giraffe which is uh, considered as earlier horse or even smaller than that you can see with a long neck and long legs so this is one of the uh, examples of how the gradual and continuous changes has occurred in species like giraffe then uh, something interesting which is there in the uh, textbook about darwin's theory of evolution so i have put the image of charles darwin so charles darwin a biologist studied numerous types of plants and animals and suggested that only those organisms are likely to survive which can best adapt themselves to a changing environment this is called the theory of survival of the fittest this is darwin's first principle so what darwin told the animals which change themselves adapt themselves or ready to get change they survive and the one which we say no i will not do anything i will uh, be li like that only so as we sometimes say right so if you don't change don't acclimatize then it will be difficult to survive so to survive in any given condition you have to adapt to the particular situation so in that case uh, you survive so that's why the first uh, principle or theory put up is survival of the fittest then if an organism is born with a new beneficial characteristic and is able to survive this change is preserved in the next generation this is darwin's second principle and is called the theory of natural selection so what was the first principle survival of the fittest second natural selection that is the characteristic every generation the species which has formed they have got some additional characteristic some new characteristic which is passed on from one generation to the other generation it is called as a natural selection if i just give a simple example just for your knowledge now for example uh, if you see ourselves we have got the characteristic of both our mother and father right because characters from both father and mother is seen in us so we resemble both of them or sometimes even our grandparents so which is passed from one generation to the other generation clear then classification of living organism how the animals are classified classified why to classify because as we uh, in this video itself or in the previous we learned many animals right but in our surrounding there are lakhs uh, and uh, lakhs of species or millions of species right but to remember all it will be difficult we know few names lion tiger fox deer but there are thousands of species how to remember those so it is difficult to study and remember all the organism in the diverse living world at the same time so classification helps in this respect different scientists have used different criteria and independently classified plants and animals so earlier many scientists try to put up the names in different way how it can be classified a hierarchy is formed what is hierarchy means in simple words means order sequence step by step now for example you are in 7th standard so how you come you don't come from 3rd standard 4th directly to 7th standard you go step by step from the senior kg to 1st standard 2nd 3rd 4th 5th 6th 7th right so you are coming step wise so this step wise arrangement is called as what hierarchy or order of arrangement okay so hierarchy is formed in classification that starts with 
किंगडम एनिमेलिया और किंगडम प्लांट इन बोथ दी स्पीशीज वेदर इट इज प्लांट स्पीशीज और एनिमल स्पीशीज फर्दर ग्रुप्स एंड सब ग्रुप्स आर फॉर्म डिपेंडिंग अपॉन सिमिलैरिटी एंड डिफरेंसेस दिस इज कॉल्ड हेरार्की ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन ओके सो आई होप नाउ इट इज क्लियर फॉर हेरार्की अरेंजमेंट ऑफ द प्लांट्स और एनिमल्स इन ए पर्टिकुलर ऑर्डर सो वॉट इज ऑर्डर लाइक सो यू कैन सी हेरार्की विच इज ऑर्डर सो इन केस ऑफ मैंगो और इन केस ऑफ ह्यूमन right so mango if you take the kingdom it comes under plants right so plantae in humans animals so it comes under kingdom animalia phylum mango comes under a phylum called as anthophyla whereas human called as chordata if i just add a point over chordata presence of chordate or the backbone which we call as a vertebral column right class dicotyledonae because there are two cotyledons present di means two right then human mammalia coming under mammals because of presence of mammary glands uh, then order sapinidales so that is in case of mango and human primates then family anar anacardia here human hominidae genus mangifera human homo species in case of mango indica are human sapiens so usually we use the term as mangifera indica or homo sapiens now just uh, in the previous video i mentioned why the term species is given how the names are given uh, it can be based on the place where it is found or uh, uh, the region or the local name so here the term indica is given because mango is one of the species found in india so that is why the term mangifera indica okay now then a second scientist which you are going to learn in this is carlos linnaeus so his binomial nomenclature by carlos linnaeus just now i said will mangifera indica homo sapiens so this was put forward by carl linnaeus or carlos linnaeus binomial nomenclature is used to identify each organism accordingly a scientific name has been assigned to each organism to identify name it so a scientific name is given like uh, now as uh, just come back to the previous one mango mango is a common name right but what is the scientific name mangifera indica or humans uh, we, we normally uh, uh, what is the scientific name given to human that is homo sapiens so it consists of two parts the first is the genus and second is the species because uh, there can be many species coming under one genus okay all identified organism have been assigned a binomial name as per the guidelines of the international code of nomenclature all the organism of a species are so similar that irrespective of differences in color height habitats habits they can reproduce among themselves and form new individuals like themselves for example all domestic cats in the world belong to the same species now if i just give detail part of cat now lion tiger panther jaguar lynx caracal all these are coming under cat family okay the I added few names uh, new names to you that is lynx caracal some more different types of cats okay so all coming under cat family then the same is true in case of animals like hen cow dog etc and plants like mango wheat maize etc clear we have the some examples given in the text and added three more which is there in the book itself so one human which you just learned in the previous slide homo sapiens dog canis is a genus lupus familiaris cow bos taurus indian bull frog again i added because we are uh, just learning about the frogs so added one more name that is indian bull frog which is called as rana tigerina then uh, hibiscus hibiscus rosa sinensis jawar sorghum bicolor mango mangifera indica clear so here a uh, little bit of additional information that is 29th april is observed as world frog protection day so killing of humming frogs is prohibited by wildlife protection act why uh, frogs uh, should not be killed why what is the use of it we may be thinking right now frogs actually is very important for our uh, 
uh, food chain or food web why now frogs what do they eat insects now we have seen many insects are there so frog keeps a check on the population of the insects suppose if frogs are not there then the insect population will increase tremendously then there will be no control on them so uh, and in case of frog population uh, frog is eaten by snakes so if frogs are not there it will auto automatically affect the snake population as well okay then some just beautiful images for you a forest uh, serene forest we can say beautiful calm forest right a, a image where water is flowing around and then i put a beautiful image of white peacock wow, the peacock you might have seen so white peacock some of you might have seen how uh, beautiful it is looking and one more beautiful image of some unusual bird so you can see a bird which is a male one uh, running around a female bird over here right and it is uh, spread out the wings of it so it is a bird of paradise okay then you can see here finally thank you so keep studying keep uh, putting hard work and uh, prepare well okay so thank you all of you thank you students